Hi everyone, the Mature Simmer here. Welcome to a how-to on a sensor network. I thought one of the ways I can discuss this is to show you one that's working and then explain how it's configured and also where there are some shortcomings. We'll let this run for a little bit and you'll be able to see trains are just kind of doing their thing. The only thing that I can't fully automate is things coming out of the coach yard and that's because of the position that I place this in on this map right now. I don't have enough room to put a sensor in and therefore I can't do anything to remove that from a manual situation. So you can see at this point I'm running a 25 speed. The trains are just kind of doing their thing. So you can see there out of the coach yard this comes out. I need to route it here. Now once it's on the rail network where there are sensors, you can see that train immediately got picked up. It got sent on its way. It's going to go ahead and earn me a green and a red experience point, and all is good. So you can see I've got a relatively complicated network. Um, I just do have, I think, three different things coming out. And so I'm going to, I still have a little bit to finish from some of the automation for my for this train here which is my urban transit train. We'll start with this and I'll explain what's happening. So first off I need to get this to the platform it's going to start on which is Charlottenburg 5. So this train basically touches all the stations so that I can get the maximum payout. It goes here to Grunewald then it goes to Busselstrasse over to Berlin HBF then comes back through Busselstrasse to Gesundbrunnen, then to Ruhleben, and then finally to Charlottenburg, and then back to the shed. So the only thing that I have been unable to get done right now is the routing here. So basically when it comes back out. So I have everything automated getting it to Berlin, but on the way back out, it won't work. Let's take a look at the type of sensors that we have available. So in the automation section, basically the sensors are in this tree here. So you have to get automatic routing, which is the auto signals, which are these instead of the rounded manual signals. Then you need to get the routing queue. The command chain is nice, but the routing queue is what's required to open up the tree. And the routing queue lets you basically route something and then you'll notice there'll be a one or a two like however many things are piled up on the signal will allow you to do that so that is what that upgrade gets you and then you finally can get your three sensors which are the arrival the departure and the routing sensor and they do various things and because the routing sensor has the most capability per se because it's not just dealing with a station it could really help in the center of your network it's the hardest one to unlock and the furthest down the tree but that is what we need here because basically this is a departure sensor you can see right now because I've got nothing connected I simply have this everything departing to this auto block and I'll explain the departure sensor when we look at it so in the stations you'll have departure sensors. The things with the three dots here are arrival sensors and those basically are then attached to a individual station just as the departure sensor is attached to an individual station as well. A routing sensor however is attached to a signal. So I'm going to go ahead and put a routing sensor in here. Then what we need to configure is to select the auto signal that we're going to operate with the routing sensor. And so it adds these little green dotted lines. So you can have a sensor kind of anywhere, but you want to have it impact as little as possible. You know, I can put the sensor in the auto block for a routing sensor to avoid potentially some early setting but I, I don't know that that buys me anything here. So when I'm here I now have this signal and then what I'm asking it to do is 
send it somewhere. So again, because I just have one path right now, I could just select other, or I could say, well, if I'm going to Busselstrasse, I want to go here. Now, if I put a signal in front, I'll be able to pick that, and then I can add things together to make this station more automated. But right now, because I'm not even using the other platform I've unlocked, I don't need to do that. So I'll explain the, re the rest of it here. But at this point, I should have everything automated other than, again, the coach yard. So we'll watch this go ahead and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of follow him. So he's going to go up here and you can see things turn on. Now this departure sensor is going to determine where he's headed. I do have to keep an eye on the coach yard, so that's his next stop. So it sends him there. The departure sensor is going to work there. The routing sensor opens up that next block. Then we're in Berlin. Now we've got the departure, departure sensor. There's a little bit of overlap. These trains all feed the coach yard, so they replenish the coach yard by coming in the other direction. So now this will route it, and the new routing sensor should open that. There we go. And then we'll be back into the departure sensor. And the, one of the arrival sensors is going to work as we go into Gesundbrunnen. You'll see these now are getting dumped into the coach yard. So I can automate that the way I have the map set up. I just can't get things out because I don't have enough room. And then it comes over to Ruhlbinnen. And then it's going to go to platform 2 and end. So now I need to get him out to four, just to kind of keep things moving. And he'll sit and wait for a while, and then he'll park himself. So it'll be the same thing. So you can see this is the routing queue where it said one and it was waiting there. So at this point you've kind of seen everything go around. So let's kind of discuss a little bit of what I have here. So we'll start with um, departure sensors and these, yeah, this is probably one of the more complex ones. Yeah, so you can see because of, of what I have, track five is feeding the coach yard and again, the Grunewald, that is how I get that to work. So you can tell what you're doing by hovering and you can see it's picking the station. Now it's gonna pick the track. So that is where I'm saying anything departing this station to Grunwald should go there. Anything going to, let me zoom out a bit, to Gesundbrunnen should also go there. Anything going to Rule Ben goes down the center track. And you can then copy configurations and paste them. So, and also paste them to all the neighbor nodes. So the ones that are here, so that's a little, you know, a quicker way to do it. So you can kind of set one up, and if you want them all to be the same, you can use your copy and paste. And then basically, you know, if you need to add another one, it just kind of shows you, you know, you'll pick and so forth. But I've, I've done everything. Now, the unique part here is if things are finished, all trains with a finished schedule are routed here. This is how I get them to go to my coach yard to just dump off. Because um, otherwise you may be tempted to say, well, pick Charlottenburg and go there. But if you've got trains that are in Charlottenburg doing something, like you're not departing from Charlottenburg to Charlottenburg. So I think you get kind of confused. The other thing that all the sensors have is this others, which if there's no matching thing in the route table up above, you can just dump things out. So... You know, I, I potentially could simplify it, um, and you know, because everything's going here, so Gesundbrunnen and Grunwald are going there. Um, but you know, in this case, like I, I only have one going in each direction, so you can see there are three different tracks where this one does repeat things. So how do I now going this way since? This departure sensor sends both Grunwald and Gesundbrunnen traffic here. How do then I automate that? That is why I have two arrival sensors. And you've got to make a decision because 
When the arrival sensor trips the signal, it obviously locks the path uh, appropriately. So in this case, you can see we have the arrival sensor and these dashed lines give us a visual. So it's using this signal and for Grunewald. So basically, it's going to say from here, it's going to route to these platforms and it's auto routing and obviously if you couldn't get to everything you'd have a problem. Now this one then is the Gesundbrunnen and it does the same thing it's just at this point there's only one platform and you, you know it's so close and the dashed line goes right up the track you can't see that it's pointing to the signal but if I highlight this you can see that it does that selection. So similarly this routing sensors, these three go to Charlottenburg, so everything coming out of here can come on any of the tracks. That's because I have a track network set up here that lets me to get to all the platforms. Um, otherwise, I'd potentially have a problem. So again, I can add six here. I've already routed up to one if I eventually do it. So by planning out your network, you want to put your arrival sensors far enough out that they can make those choices for you. On this one, um, just because of the timing of how I have things now, if I got a busier system going, like off this track, I could go to two um, three and four because I, I have a path but on this track I don't have a path up now again I could just put something in there and I so I could repeat the arrival sensors and then these auto signals are the ones that are tied to it so ultimately as I have more money and can expand the network instead of routing all traffic this way um, I could do that right now it's not giving me a problem and then it also opens up other things to come the other direction so you're always kind of figuring out where do I want to put my signals because keep in mind the departure sensor here to Ruhlman is going to go all the way out to that signal so like once this leaves any of these stations it's gonna lock to that signal. So anything coming this way doesn't have a lot of options but the way this is built when they depart here so for example if I depart there and go to Charlottenburg I'm, I'm pointing there if I depart here I'm pointing there so I'm going straight down these tracks but basically these other two tracks are going all the way down here and then switching this one's still switching, but my bottleneck is just anything coming out of three is going to be potentially an issue. But right now, the contracts I have are few and far between, and it just works out. I haven't had a problem. So those are the three sensors. This one was, was a little tricky, so what you've got to work out is what can you do? So there is an update uh, this is this vi I'm doing this video after update 7 one of the things they allowed us to do and I don't think I have any um, sensors or signals in that you can put signals on, on on bends now before you had to be on a straight section you still can't put them on switches obviously but you have more options of where to put your signal I can't use this block for a sensor so I have an arrival sensor for Charlottenburg all the way out here, but that's partially because right now, like once a train goes down this way, I've locked the track anyway. If I start to double track this or I do something different, I may want to then move the sensor and figure out a different way to do it. And because I used up the real estate down here for the sensors heading in to Grunwald and Gesundbrunnen, I couldn't put, a, I, could, I could still fit a signal down here, I believe, but then I don't have any room for a sensor. And the sensor would be up here, and then potentially I'm setting that signal down there. It might work, it, you know, might not. I ever want to route to Grunwald 
like you know th this signal is better for routing to that and then I'd probably want to play around and see but what I ended up doing is then I have this routing signal sensor that works in conjunction with this so if you think back to the urban transit train I had it left Gesundbrunnen and came down here to rule Benin this arrival sensor is for Charlottenburg so this arrival sensor doesn't do anything this departure sensor going to rule Benin gets me there because I can't pick here because I've put a signal there so you can only pick the next segments that are available are the only choices they give you you can't suddenly pick way down the track maybe they'll change that in the future but right now that's not how it works and so what I had to do is the departure sensor gets me here but then I need the routing sensor to then get me to this segment so if I go there I'm there and then here I have an arrival sensor for Rulebin and, and again the way I've got the, tr the uh, track set up I can get to platforms 2, 3, and 4 from here which also would give me the benefit if I was running anything from Grunwald at some point to Rulebin and, and out the platforms I could work with that as well. You know I know it was a bit of a quick discussion and again arrival sensor here for Berlin I just have two platforms it's running from this signal and then it's immediately gonna switch it and I gave myself enough room after the auto block because if you put the sensor here for example so initially I had this crossover um, further here I think it was literally there so I could put the signal before it I mean, so maybe it was over one. So I, I was able to put the signal there or run this signal, but then the sensor would have been there. And then I would have locked things very quickly, which is okay the way I have the network set up now. But if I suddenly have trains coming the other way down platform eight, I don't want to lock things through the auto block and then lock platform 8 and make it unusable for example earlier than I have to so there's a little bit of planning you have to do to give yourself enough space to use the sensors but the nice thing is you know and I'll, I'll let this keep running obviously I'll have to keep an eye on the coach yard in case something comes out but the really nice thing is as you can see you just don't have to do much of anything and you know I was I've been able to get a lot of points so here like it, it reverses because of the departure sensor so the departure sensor even though um, you know this doesn't pass through um, I believe that's the right track Whoop, bad platform well so caused myself some trouble because I was trying to guess and rush and I was wrong so I didn't get my points there so shame on me but again I'm just kind of showing you the automation more than anything else so I've got a gap here where I could get more things in I was gonna say I think literally everything else is on platform 5 so now when they come out the next couple are gonna be okay there so you could leave it running at high speed and that's the benefit that all this automation gives you at this point is you could kind of do what I'm doing here and you know now the next time a train comes out is the one that goes to four so if you learn the pattern even for something like this if you're just like hey I want to run this for a while so here's my urban transit train doing its thing so departure sensor sends it off routing sensor you know and these are all arrival and and departure sensors and that again was just the overlap there so it's it's telling me it can arrive these are now all feeding the coach yard so they're gonna get here they're gonna use the departure sensor finished route and park themselves into the coach yard obviously using the routing queue to not be able to have a collision you know if I'm going from Gesundbrunn from Rulben right now it's just the departure sensor and it's going up to the platform so this now is the one that goes to four I don't get a bad platform and now it will route that appropriately 
and we should be good. And then it puts that away, and then the others will be coming from Platform 5. So hopefully this gives you a, a good idea and good taste of what you can do. Again, this isn't a very complicated uh, network by any stretch of the imagination, but um, you know you can see even in the small compact area you've got a lot going on. We have a lot of sensors. There's a lot of money invested in into this here. Okay, so I must have two that go to platform four and then two that go to platform five. So again, you, you need to learn your sequence, but this is just, you know, me not being prepared for, for this part. So I've basically given away some experience points in both cases. That train has made me money, but it hasn't gone ahead and done, you know, anything else. Now I took a while to click there. Now I might be delayed. Yep, so now I'm... <laughs> So that's the thing, when you're running at high speed, you're going to run into those issues. But uh, this should give you a pretty good idea. If you've got any questions, I'll certainly be happy to try to answer them. Um, you know, just like any early access thing, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning as, as I go with everybody else. There's certainly people who know more than me. There always are. I will find an answer for you if I don't know it, but for the most part, I've got a pretty good understanding now, I feel, of the sensors and can piece things together to make them work. So again, kind of using this combination to get that to work, you know, figuring out how to use these to get these other pieces to work. Those are things I had to puzzle out a little bit and, um, you know, the best way to learn anything is, is by doing, I feel. So get in the game play around, get yourself built up. You know, obviously you've got to get to the point where you can unlock all these things, which takes some time in and of itself. But once you have all these things open, play around and get comfortable with it. So hopefully that how-to gives you some guidance, and I will see you next time.